Hello and welcome to the Bearded Mathman's YouTube channel. Hey, this is the second part of our unit on polynomial functions. And what we're going to be talking about today are intercepts and degree. Here's our goals. Here's what we're going to get at. First thing we're going to do is we're going to learn how to find the y-intercept. You probably already know how to do that. Pretty straightforward. It just applies what you know in a different context, but exactly the same way and just as easy. We're also going to talk about finding the x-intercepts. We're just going to use things you know from learning about quadratic equations and factoring but there are some we're going to visit we're going to visit finding x intercepts again in the future as we develop some more tools but for now it involves factoring now we're also going to be able to determine the degree of a factored polynomial function by looking at it and we're also going to be able to find the maximum number of x intercepts of a given polynomial function so we got four things right one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Man, I feel bad for making poor, making fun of that poor gentleman. Let's just get down to some math, all right? We can hear about my self-loathing later. All right, so here we have this polynomial function right here. It has exactly one y-intercept, as they all will. All polynomial functions are going to have one y-intercept. And as you know, for all y-intercepts, the x-coordinate, the x-value of that coordinate is zero. And so here is the function itself, 1 half x cubed minus 2x squared minus x plus 1. And the way we find the y-intercept is we put a 0 for the x, follow the order of operations, see what's left. So we plug in a 0 for x, and if you remember, this is our generic, but in standard form, polynomial function. This last value is going to be all that's left, because everything else is a coefficient of x. And so whatever that last value is, when it's in standard form, that is going to be our y-intercept. So 0, 1, you see? Because that's 0, minus 0, minus 0, plus 1, just 1. Y, the y-intercept is always the last value. You probably already knew that, but just to make it clear. Now, let's talk about the number of x-intercepts, shall we? Let's say you have a linear equation, y equals mx plus b, right? If you have a linear function, it has a degree of 1, and it's going to have, at most, one x-intercept. It could have 0, like it could be, for example, y equals 3. It has no x-intercepts whatsoever, but the most it's going to have is 1. If you have a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, that's quadratic, has a degree of 2. It could have 0 x-intercepts, it could have 1 x-intercept, or it could have 2. The maximum number of x-intercepts that a quadratic will have is 2. Now, with cubic functions, the degree is 3. And the most x-intercepts it's going to have is 3. It could have 1, 2, or 3. Cubic functions, as we're going to learn in the future, will always have at least one x-intercept. If, if it has a degree that's even, it might not have any. If it has a degree that's odd, it's always going to have one. We're going to learn more about that in the future. So here's the deal. If you have a polynomial function with a, of a degree of n, it is going to have at most that number of x-intercepts. N. So if we had a polynomial whose degree was 27, it's going to have at least 20. It's going to have at most. It's going to have at most 27 x-intercepts. There we go. So let's go ahead and take a look at this wonderful graph right here. This wonderful polynomial has four x-intercepts. So that means it couldn't have a degree of one. It also could not have a degree of two or three. There are four intercepts. So the smallest degree this could have is four. Now, in the future, we're going to learn more about this, like how we know that this degree is going to be even. But for now, we know it's at least 4. Now, it turns out that this function is quantity 1 tenth x minus 1 squared times x minus 25 squared minus 4. That's this function right here. What if, though, you were given this function without the graph and you were asked to find its degree? Could you do it? Let's talk about that, right? So we have this function right here, and now we're being asked to find its degree. It's not in standard form. So it's not a degree of 2, because if you multiply all of this out, you're going to get something more than 2. And if you're only asked for the degree, it's going to take you a long time to multiply this out. You might mess it up. That's a lot of work. So let's go ahead and just take a look at it and see what we can figure out. See if we can figure it out just by a little bit of inspection, right? So what we have is we have a binomial here times another binomial there, but each of those binomials are squared. But do you notice this binomial right here has a degree of 1, so does this. So these are both going to have a degree of 2. 
And when those multiply together, it's going to end up having a degree of 4. Let's go ahead and explore that a little bit, right? So I went ahead and I squared these two binomials. You shouldn't just to find the degree, but I just want you to have an idea of how I know that when I square x minus 25 squared, it's quadratic has a degree of 2, right? So a degree of 2 times another degree of 2, well, that's going to be a degree of 4. When I multiply x squared times x squared, that's x to the fourth. If I were to set this up, the way that you would write it all out, you get x squared times x squared, that's x to the fourth. This one in here is going to give you x cubed, and this is going to give you an x squared. So you see, the degree is going to be x to the fourth. Let's see another example here. Let's say we were going to be asked to find the degree of this function. 3x squared times the quantity x cubed minus 4 times x squared plus 11x minus 5, right? Well, let's see. When I multiply these two together, that's going to give me x to the fifth. There's going to be a whole bunch of other stuff too, but that's going to be the biggest exponent that I'm going to get is when I multiply this x cubed times that x squared. That's x to the fifth. And then I'm going to end up distributing this 3x squared. Well, x squared times x to the fifth, that's x to the seventh. The degree is going to be x to the seventh. Do you see how you can figure it out? Hope so. If not, leave me a comment down below and I'll, I'll do a video exploring that in depth a little, in a, with a little more detail for you. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. If you're determining the degree from the number of x-intercepts on a graph, and we're going to compare that idea to determining, determining the number of x-intercepts from the degree of a function that's written out, right? So if you have the graph, you actually can't tell with what you guys know right now. You can't tell what the degree is, but you can find out what its minimum is going to be. So when we did the one that was had four x-intercepts, we knew that the degree was at least four. Because if it was a degree of three, the most intercepts it could have would be three. Yeah, so if you see uh, 3x intercepts, the degree is 3 or higher. But if you're looking at a function, right, the number of x intercepts is going to be a maximum of that degree of 5. So, like this one right here, x minus 4 quantity to the fifth, that has a degree of 5. The most x intercepts this will have is 5. Good? All right, now. Just to make sure we're 100% solid right here, this is a really big idea. The number of x-intercepts is going to be, for a, for a polynomial function of degree n, it's going to be n or less. So, for example, right here I've got x to the power of fifth. This will have, this will have no more than five x-intercepts. It's going to have five or fewer. Do you see? And then the other thing, the flip side of that is if you had a graph, right? And you could look at the number of x-intercepts. You know that that is the smallest value that the degree will be. Yeah. All right. So later on, we're going to find some more sophisticated ways of finding x-intercepts, right? But for now, let's use what we know. So let's find the x-intercepts of the one we were talking about just a moment ago, x minus 4 to the power of 5. So your very first step, because we're going to use factoring, is you're going to factor that thing. You're going to set it equal to zero, and then you're going to factor it completely. This one's a little redundant. I think you can already see where this is going, right? This has exactly one x-intercept, four, but it's repeated five times. That's kind of an interesting thing, because as it turns out, the number of solutions is going to match the degree. However, they can be repeated, they can be imaginary, all kinds of stuff. We'll get into all that later as we get into polynomials and complex numbers here in the very near future, right? So first step, set it equal to zero. Second step, factor it completely. Then you take each factor, write an equation where you set that factor equal to zero, and then you solve it. So we have five x-intercepts of four comma zero. They're all the same. So the maximum number of x-intercepts is going to be five. But there might only be one, as there is here, and it's 4, 0. Do you see? So let's talk about one that's maybe a little more complicated to find, the x-intercept. So here are our steps. Set it equal to 0. Factor it completely. Set each factor equal to 0. Solve it. Make sure you write your answer as a coordinate, right? So this is already factored. x squared minus 4 is a factor. This could be factored more, x plus 2 times x minus 2. However, might be an easier way to go about that. This is factored, and this one is non-factorable. There's no way to factor this one. So we're going to say that it's already completely factored. And here's the thing. 
You have to be smart about this. You have to use all of the tools you know. Like, for example, x squared minus 4, I could factor it more. But I could also solve it another way because if b equals 0, or if it's in uh, vertex form, if you have a quadratic in vertex form, you can use inverse operations. Yeah, so let's do this. We're going to solve each of these. So I'm going to take x squared minus 4, set it equal to 0, add 4 to both sides, take the square root, you get 2 and negative 2. This one you're going to add 3, divide by 2, and for the last one it's not factorable. So we're going to have to use a quadratic formula. We're going to get these two values right here, 2.77 and negative 1.27. Those are going to be the two values that would make this statement true. So there we go. Here are our x-intercepts. Here are, our, here are our solutions. If you set it equal to zero, it gives us all of these intercepts right here. There are one, two, three, four, and five. And this is a degree of five because if I multiply x squared times x, you get x cubed times another x squared, x to the fifth. Here's a graph of it. You see, we have our all of our x-intercepts right here. We have two all the way over here, negative two right here, negative 1.27. You've got three over two and 2.77. I rounded it to, th to the hundredths place. That They rounded it a little, a little farther, a little more accurately. But same thing, right? Now, what if, what if you had something like this? So do you see what I did? I, I took this plus 7 and I made it a minus 7. So if we solve this, these two are the same. We already know this is plus and minus 2. This is 3 over 2. But when we take and we, we can't factor this, it's not factorable. But when you plug that into the quadratic equation, the quadratic formula, I mean, you end up with a negative number, square root of a negative number. That's imaginary. So that means that this part doesn't offer any x-intercepts. We have three x-intercepts. It's still a degree of 5 x squared times x is x to the third, times x squared is x to the fifth. Still a degree of 5, but it only has three x-intercepts this time. Do you see? Degree of 5, only three x-intercepts. So when you see this graph, if you were seeing a graph like this and it asks you, hey, what is the degree? You don't know for sure. You know it's at least three or more. That's all you know. So I hope this has been helpful. Let's go ahead and do a recap real quick. To make sure, if you want to find y-intercepts, you just plug a 0 for x. If you're going to find the x-intercepts, set the whole thing equal to 0, you factor it, you solve it, boom, you're done, right? The number of x-intercepts is at most the same as the value of the degree. So if you had a degree of 4, you're going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 x-intercepts. Hey, if you're interested in applying what you know, what you've learned here, and getting some notes on the same topic, I will put a link in the description to my website, beardedmathman.com. Try it out. Try those problems. Look around for other great math topics. And I hope it's been helpful. If it has, give me a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, all that kind of happy stuff. And until next time, I hope you have a great day.